Hi, Ellen. You're on mute. I didn't know. <laughs> Glad everyone is making it back. All right, back. We're back. Am I the only one to get, did everybody get kicked off? I'm wondering. Yeah. yeah. All right. I am, I was, I think I wasn't actually the host because I'm not anymore. Who um, is? Uh, Brian is. Brian. Brian, so Brian's back? Not no, yet. Not yet. But I think he, he tried to, rejoin to get this audio fix and in doing that kicked us all off. There he is. Have we all made it back? I don't see Brian. I don't see Brian either. He's NoHo Arts connecting to Oh, of course right he is. No. On my computer, he's muted. Hi, y'all, I'm back. Oh, yay. Brian, are you with us? I think he was saying really good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, this is what we this is what we needed. There he is. Hi, right, Brian. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I lost uh, had issues technically, but uh, I don't know what you heard or what you didn't hear. We didn't hear a lot. Okay, so. Um, you said the gist of what I was trying to say is that like the change, like the people on the council create the culture of like how how much they want to give. And it's changed a lot since I've been on the board since 2008. Um, and I've grown, the council has grown. And the idea, I think that Danielle and myself with the subcommittees is we want more input from the council members and more things to be done. And it's more efficient if the, the subcommittees meet, define their agenda, propose all these things, do all the background work. And then when we come to our board meeting to that tonight, we can just have the updates and then we can vote on things quickly and have, you know, just, just get more things done. All the things that we talk about getting done, I just think it'd be more efficient when this new subcommittee structure that we've been trying to slowly push for people to take more power and, and to define things. So I'm really, a lot of the work has been done by a lot of the members and I'm, we're just, I think, spurring that on more. Like you guys are all doing amazing. Everybody, all the people in the council, everybody has their, 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 are putting in their effort and we're just trying to advocate more for that. Like the idea of just giving a little bit more responsibility so there's more, you know, subcommittee meetings so we get more things done and be more efficient as a council. That's just my perspective. My speech before was a lot more, be was a lot better than that, but that's my perspective <laughs> on it. As an example, th like that really made a lot of sense to me. If folks have questions, like maybe time for questions about that. And I can give an example of how it worked, if that's helpful. Um, I, I do have kind of a question slash comment, but I'd like to hear um, your example before. So we have our equity statement that's on our website that everyone has seen a million times. Um, and I kind of floated it in, an, in a board meeting, I think during new business. I was like, oh, hey, like what do folks think about this? And it was kind of, there was a little bit of chaos. Like no one quite knew what to make of this not fully fleshed idea. So I went back to, to Rachel and Freeman who were on this equity subcommittee with me at the time. And we just wrote something, we drafted something and we brought a draft and we asked, we, we sent it out in advance. We asked for it to be on the meeting agenda and we asked for a, a vote and discussion on it. And then we spent 15 minutes of the meeting editing the thing 
deciding, are we looking at it, editing it, and then deciding whether it was going to become official or not. So there was a vote. Um, and that's how that happened. It wasn't like, <coughs> it wasn't really um, anything beyond that. It was like an idea, a group of people fleshed it out, proposed it, and it was a yes vote or a no vote, right? And if it had been a maybe vote, then there might've been like five more steps afterwards. Um, and that's kind of, I think, what happened a little bit with what we did with Nan, but um, I, Nan was like a big maybe and had many, many steps, but I think the simplest form of like proposing projects and the work that happens in some committees is that the idea emerges in a subcommittee, it gets fully fleshed out, proposed to the board in the form of a yes or a no vote, accept or reject, and if there's a maybe or more discussion needed, then goes back into committee, gets rebaked, and then brought back to full com committee um, meetings for board approval. Does that does that clarify? Like, I know it's kind of, it still feels very procedural in a lot of ways. Like we're not just getting on the call and having a conversation and deciding, but um, does that help at all? I missed part of that, but one thing I was, uh, for some reason, my computer just gave me weird, gave me weird face. Um, anyway, I'm curious as to Brian mentioned the fact that the culture of the board has transitioned a great deal. And we can see that certainly the year that I've been here and folks. And so I'm wondering if it's a need, and this may come out of some work out of the equity subcommittee to look at a mission, uh, a brief retreat for us to redefine and relook at our mission statement, what does that actually mean? What are we actually prepared to do? Because that would help us perhaps, or yeah, I'm thinking it might help us, let me put it, I'm thinking it might help us move forward in all the various subcommittees to know, oh, if this is where we're going, then this is these are the kind of projects that align with our vision. And the more aligned they can be, the, the, more, the, the more successful they are, the more we can get behind them, the more less time there is discussing these things in these larger meetings so that they would, so that process might be really helpful to realign values is what you also talked about at the very beginning. I proposed it. I proposed the board retreat, uh, was working on planning one with Brian, and then we had our lovely pandemic and decided that maybe it wasn't something to do over Zoom. And since we were having no. so many, we have so many vacancies, we wanted to wait until more people joined so that we had, it was like the onboarding and the welcome. And I, I would love to actually propose that. So we have our board membership subcommittee of people who do like recruiting and whatever. I would like to actually maybe suggest that if anyone is interested in planning a retreat, or, or working on that or thinking about that, that maybe that's something that the board I membership- I will work on that with Okay. People, okay, I'd be happy to work on that. So, so let's include that in like the board membership subcommittee. Mm -hmm. And it's like membership and training maybe, it's membership and development, right? Cause it's like, we all need to be developed as board members, as chairs, as subcommittee members, all that stuff. Right. And then, and so I said, all that grows out of understanding who we are and why we're here, right? You can't train people if you don't know why you're training them to do what, right? So, yeah. Jesse has his hand up. Uh, thanks, Brian. I, you know, um, I didn't want to cut off either Danielle or Kent. Um, I totally understand what what the reasoning behind the subcommittees are and what we're talking about in terms of things coming up and being fleshed out in these subcommittees and then bringing them to the larger group to vote and discuss on. Um, I guess, and this is falling back to um, my, you know, the, my request earlier, um, or I guess mid last week, about uh, talking about trans performance and changing the name. I don't necessarily see that that's something that should start in a subcommittee or don't know which subcommittee that one should really start in because it crosses multiple ones, right? Mm -hmm. It's public arts, it's um, equity, it's um, schools, you know? So I feel like I guess I'm wondering where 
I feel like that conversation needs to start organically with the whole group. And if we all decide that it needs to be fleshed out more in a specific subcommittee um, based on an initial discussion, I think that that can happen organically. I just feel like there are certain things that may not um, start in a subcommittee as easily as others. Because honestly, I feel like the, all the subcommittee, all the, if this started in the, in the equity subcommittee, I feel like that would be wasting time in equity um, because I don't see that anyone in the <clears throat> equity subcommittee would feel opposed to bringing this to the larger group for a question. And so why waste 20 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it ends up being in the equity subcommittee, especially when there are other things that can be talked about um, and moved forward on um, when we can dive right into it here. And maybe this is just kind of a strange situation and most of them will fall into the category of, you know, things that'll start in the subcommittee and then come to the general. Um, but I guess I'm, now's as good a time as any to bring this up because I kind of feel like we're talking about pretty general stuff anyway. So I think in the past, like if, I mean, from my, what I always said, which is not like the procedural way to, maybe it is a procedural way to, I don't know. I would raise things that I didn't know where they went in new business. I think that's what the new business section is for, but like maybe we should rebrand that <laughs> and not call it new business and call it some like, I don't know. In new, maybe we can discuss in new business, like how we want to use that time. Um, I guess I'm. I, I hear you with that, but new business seems to be like at the end of every meeting, right? And everyone's kind of rushed and is like, okay, well, if there's new business, then where is that going to go? Is it automatically just going to be pushed to another thing? Um, so, so the agendas are just, I think, in alphabetical order, which is like, we could actually change the way they're structured, I think, right? right? Yeah, Brian? no, yeah. I, th I think I'll just, I'll just say that there's no reason they have to be in a certain order other than you, know, you start the meeting and take the attendance and do, but there really isn't. You, you all, I mean, the, this, this council decides how they want it. And I've been on, on other boards or, or councils depending on what the topic is, is bringing certain things forward to talk. If, if they're, if, you know, you want to make sure there's more time for things you can, I mean, it's, it's our, it's our meeting. We can do what we want. I guess that's why I, I, I was kind of going under that assumption because I've, I too have seen different structures and everything. And so always seeing new business at the end kind of implied to me that it was just um, for things that were briefly going to be discussed and then moved over either into the next general meeting or into a subcommittee after that. So um, I, I guess I think it's maybe a good idea to review a little bit um, since I've been on the council also, because I'm, uh, even though I'm not as new as many of you, I've been on uh, two years. I'll be starting my second term, um, assuming that I go down on Friday and get uh, my, take my oath. Um, and, and my experience being on the council and at the time, the people who are on the council who are here it were Ellen and Lori and Kathy, as well as Brian. Uh, oh, Eamon and Eamon and, um, uh, and a few others. And the way the, my, my recollection is that the way that meetings ran is they were around these certain anchor events that were the purview of the Arts Council. Um, so, you know, the four Sundays and the and trans performance and and um, first night um, and the summer events and everything else was kind of subordinated to though and the grants right and the, uh, as well, everything else was kind of subordinated to that and then 
I think partly because as Brian said, and help me if I'm getting this wrong, and also because of the arrival of Rachel and Danielle, um, there was this move toward just thinking about the, the deeper issues uh, of the arts. So Brian was interested in expanding what the Arts Council did, and we were interested in responding to the needs of the community more fully rather than just around these events. And that gave birth to the subcommittees. And that was just, just kind of getting steam, building up steam um, just before many of you uh, who are now on the council arrived. Um, and so, you know, I was involved in helping with the biennial because that was something that was going on or the, uh, the artist reception because that was something that was going on rather than generating new ideas, it was really the, the logistics of those events um, or the themes of those events. And I, I mentioned this just to kind of put things in context that, that this whole process is kind of new. And so um, in addition to that, you know, then there's the, the pandemic and then we're all on Zoom. Um, so I, I think, you know, I understand the, the frustration with things not getting done, uh, more quickly in some respects. Um, but I also think that the Arts Council has been in transition. And I think that often does take some time. And, and I hope we do make some progress. And I'm confident that we will make some progress. And I think that the, the idea of having these, these subcommittees addressing some of the bigger issues and, and potential for other issues, as well as helping to to manage the ongoing events, I think that's, you know, I think that's a really sound organization. Thanks for the context, Freeman. And if subcommittees don't work, we don't have to use them, right? Like, <laughs> like there may be something better, um, but like, as Freeman mentioned, like this is the thing that seemed to make sense to the people at the time, but like it definitely, we don't have to keep subcommittees. And I know this is gonna sound so awful to say, but I wonder if like the board membership and development subcommittee could do, or, and like in co co collaboration with equity subcommittee or, or with whomever wants to do this thinking can actually do some thinking about meeting structure um, and board work. And if there is something different that would work better, like introduce that and propose that and we can try it. Um, or we can at least make it part of our process to do more of this reflection, right? Like we started this because there was like a lot of confusion and, and we're, I don't, from my experience on this board and in other places, there's not much reflection. It's like, we do this because this is the way we've always done it. Or we did this because the way we were doing it before really didn't work, but does this work? So I think we should incorporate more reflection, more dialogue. Maybe, maybe this format is not the best for everyone. Maybe there's a survey we could think about doing or written feedback. There's other ways that we can get feedback and reflect on whether this process actually works or not. But yes, I was part of the move to do subcommittees and I'm not wed to it at all. Like um, we're, we could still do it differently. I don't want to suggest that we're entrenched in it either, but I appreciate the, the, the context a lot, Freeman. Thank you. That was really helpful historical context. I'm feeling as I'm listening to this that a lot of some of the confusion was that many of us newer board members came on during a grant round and pandemic. So some of that, some of understanding what's possible and what the goal is of the subcommittees was not fully, there wasn't a chance to really communicate it. So this was helpful to get caught up to speed. And I think we'll be able to feel a little more empowered in all of our roles now. Also, I like the subcommittee model. It was it's a good thought. And I think that it could be a very good system. Thanks. Well, I don't think we want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. <laughs> And maybe we need to give it a little more time and let the subcommittee sort of get to a point of each one having accomplished something and then reevaluate it. I think, I think making reflection, like, is this working? Do we need a subcommittee for everything? Are these the right subcommittees? I think, 
at the very least, making reflection a part of the process would be would be great. I think it's this just we've all meeting. been in survival mode. <laughs> this whole meeting has been reflection. All right. So any other thoughts or should we jump into our yeah. committee updates? Uh, I know it feels so, it feels like, oh, should we really be jumping into subcommittee updates? Um, okay, we'll do it. I just it. wanted to say that, you know, this format of Zooming has, yeah. you know, it's just limited our contact with each other. And those little moments we would have when you arrive at a meeting and you chat with somebody either about something personal or about maybe something in the committee that you're in together. And, you know, I feel like that stuff is going to become more, perhaps a little more streamlined than it's an effort to do it on Zoom all the time, you know, or I find it is anyway. Is there any timeline about when we can meet in person? Brian? Mm -hmm. I'm going to discuss... Uh getting the city hall hearing room with the city council president and the uh, city council secretary. And then I'm gonna send a survey to the board um, asking to provide information if you're vaccinated, if you feel comfortable meeting in person, um, and if you feel comfortable with a mask or without a mask. And we can look forward to having more information on that soon. Um, and I'm hoping that in August, we can all get together and meet together. Um, Thank you. That's so promising. Before we jump into the agenda, I'd like to say one other thing about my experience on the Arts Council. Um, so uh, periodically, because I'm lucky enough to not have other things that insist on my time, um, I, I wander into Brian's office and I, I see what he's doing. And my experience is that every time I've been in there, there hasn't been one time that I've been in there where he's kicking back and having a kind of amiable conversation and, and uh, you know, not engaged in moving some of the, one of the activities that, that's under our purview forward. You know, there's lots going on. And now that... Uh, I've been invited to be the treasurer of the Inc. board. You know, I'm, now I'm looking at the finances too. And today I went into the office just to continue to try to wrap my head around about that whole process. And it's a little mind numbing actually to see all of the things that the director of the Arts Council is actually doing of a clerical nature, right? I mean, he he's, he, it's not like he's got this great cl clerical staff. And I feel, and the reason I mention that is because I feel that um, you know, any support that we can offer to, to, um, to ha have those events and other events operate with our participation will be valuable because it's not a big staff, even though it has a huge impact on the, on the city, I think. And in fact, I've mentioned to the city council, and I think that's one of the things as arts council members that we could do is to talk about the allocation of the budget. And, you know, we're talking about this department of community care um, and everybody knows who's talking about those that that department knows that arts is an important part of how we care for a community. And and yet when you look at the budget allocation of the arts council, it's um, it's pretty modest to say the least in comparison to others. So I, I just wanted to put that context out there and maybe you all understand that, you know, but my experience when I go in there is it, it helps me understand all the things that are going on and what, what Brian is actually, Brian and Peter and Steve are all involved in on a pretty ongoing basis. You know, it's, uh, it's not just something that happens when we get together every month to have our meetings. You know, there's lots going on. Maybe that wasn't necessary, but I-, I It wasn't, I, but it, thank you, Freeman. I mean, I just feel that, I mean, I'm thank you for that, 
but at the same time, most of us, I mean, I know myself, I know other people here have very full lives as well. And so I'm not knocking that, but when, you know, the we're doing what we can. And I think that's what we need to be encouraged to do is to do the best that we can and what we can, right? Rather than comparing ourselves to one another, because then we end up falling short and it ends up being some kind of competition or something. And that makes my skin crawl. Wow. All right. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate everyone's honesty and willingness to to be transparent about their their thoughts, their their feelings on how things are going. And I think it's just it's clear to me that like we would all really benefit from being in a room together and talking about what needs to happen and what our capacities are and what our skill sets are and what we want to be doing. It's like just because we're capable and just because we're uh um available to do certain things doesn't mean we necessarily want to be and we're volunteers so I, I just want to honor that and respect that as well I, I frequently say please don't punish me for my competence and it's just like just because we're you're you have a skill set or you have a talent doesn't mean you're in any way like required to bring that to this group like this should this could be a place for growth and new learning right so um you know I, I really appreciate everyone always constantly being here, volunteering with their time, just being on these meetings, the thought work, the emotional work that goes into showing up to these meetings and doing subcommittee work outside of that. Like, I know it's a, it's a lot. Um, so I just want to end with a note of appreciation um, and excitement around, you know, how much better it'll be once we get to really start doing it. So with that, um, I think the first update we have is, just moving alphabetically, but we don't have to, like if there's a subcommittee that wants to jump in and go first, you can, but if not, then I would say, let's um, hear from the biennial um, committee. And it looks like there, there isn't a chair. So if anyone from that committee wants to um, present out any updates, please do. Um, I can, I can present the biennial. Um, I don't know the number of, uh, submissions we've had for uh, visual arts or poetry. Um, but we're in the month of August, the um, facilitator who we have to decide on, will have to meet with all the, with the jurors. Um, Karen will be um, uh, the facilitator and juror for the poetry. And Zoe Sasson, who was um, going to be our facilitator and was a member of the uh, the Biennial Committee on Visual Arts has just resigned from it. Um, she said it was, first of all, a little more work than she expected. And she also just got a full-time position at the high school, which will really take up her time in August. So um, we will be looking to somebody who, for somebody who feels very computer competent to be able to facilitate with the visual arts um, jurors. And that person soon would have to set a, you know, a timeline for when they would meet. Um, just throwing that out, if anybody is interested in that position. Um, but I think everything's moving ahead pretty well. I, um, I wrote, Faith asked her at, the, at Forbes Library what they think will be possibilities for an opening. Um, you know, can we do it full scale with food and whatnot? Um, or will it be, you know, just will be able to hang in in October, but I'm not sure that they're gonna want, you know, 200 people walking through the gallery on that Friday night. And I'm not sure that they're gonna wanna have a poetry reading there in the Coolidge room. It's usually, it's packed. Um, so anyway, those are still up in the air. I don't know, anything else, Kathy? Kent, um, Kent's been sort of on the- on, Yeah, not yeah no, I, I, I agree. And I think, kind of you know, there. I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> That uh, you know, as you were saying all this, and we can try to think if you know anybody who may be interested in participating, doesn't have to be a member of the committee here, but to help us out, that would be a great thing, you know, because Zoe wasn't a member of the Arts Council, but she she was a perfect person to be on on our on our subcommittee. So, yeah. um, but no, I think, and right now I know that um, from from being on another um, board that. 
um, you know, Arts Night Out and, and that, that whole weekend that um, when our um, opening is, I think it may come about in September, October. I'm not sure that's, I mean, the city is, is going to be having, Brian, you might know when the next Arts Night Out is, but. Um, is there any way to pay someone to do that job? I haven't heard, I haven't heard anything from the Arts Night Out. Okay. Uh, people at all. Yeah. So I'll, I'll check in with them. Uh, mm -hmm with the downtown North Hampton Association because yeah, I'm pretty the sure they're ones yeah. yeah and see if what yeah. they have any plans I'll text mm -hmm. her right now yeah hold on I'll text Amy yeah I was gonna, that the, that was that was what I understood at the the jazz festival board meeting last night and maybe our committee should meet um I, I think, think it's time for good. another meeting I think it would be good okay. yeah um, I don't know if anyone heard Ken's question about paying someone to do that um, visual arts coordinator work. I don't know if there's a budget for it. I, I just want to echo, I think that's a great idea. And if it's, especially if it's something that requires specialized knowledge around, mm, exactly. you know, how to use technology, uh, it could be a mm. great part-time gig for a college student or, um, mm. you know. And it's very time limited, you know, it's going to be this amount of time, it would be a great, I mean, it would be a summer, great summer, summer employment, a summer task mm -hmm. for somebody to mm -hmm. participate. Mm -hmm. Unpunished participate. Isn't mm -hmm. it going to be more in September, though? Or, oh, more in September, it... but, you know, uh, but I think a lot, of, you know, uh, but you're right that the beginning will be in the, but in, in October, that's September, October, so. When is the jury yeah. again, in, Ellen? In, in August. August. In August, okay, we, so. Right. I'll we, look. We let people anybody, know by September one. What well, is your anybody, relationship? Does anybody have a relationship with Historic Northampton? They have quite. I mean, can you pilfer and you talk to those two women there and maybe get a volunteer because they have a lot of volunteers that do similar kinds of things. It might be something that uh, I don't uh, know, but uh, I, I can I ask. That, Go ahead, yeah. Alan can ask. You can ask. Yeah. Yeah. Lori. Yeah. Lori. Yeah. I'm sorry. I think it would so I missed what you said. I'm sorry. Say it again, please. Oh, the other part. Yeah. Not not you, Lori. I think it has to do with somebody from um his I'm sorry, from historic Northampton. Oh. Right. Yeah. Right. I think yeah. it would be really helpful if either Ellen or Kathy, if you could just write out what the job yeah. that needs to be I done is so. like, what that is the scope good. of the project about mm -hmm. how much time do you expect it to take? Like almost like a job description if we were going to yeah. list it as a job description, but then we can even, I can forward it to that would my be good. former interns, right? Like we can forward it out to our networks so and see. Good. And if we yeah. get five people that want to do it, then I think we're going to yeah. say yes to I all mean, of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Ellen, maybe you and I could, we could start to do that work with our committee. Mm -hmm. Good. Brian? Brian? Yeah. Um, the DNA is going to start, kick off Arts Night Out in September with the Chalk Art Festival. Oh, right. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, so then I'm sure it'll be Arts Night Out in October as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So then it'll be the decision of the mm -hmm. library mm -hmm. if they want to have a large opening, I think. So on that one of us one of us will have to get in touch with faith mm -hmm. um about that i did um, already yeah yeah ellen did okay yeah and if you wanted to, to reach out to um provisions about catering uh trade that they usually do you can do that or i can do that uh either way um so if you have any recommendations for mm -hmm. somebody to do mm -hmm. some uh, administration with that has expertise in artcall.org. Um, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's unfortunate. It's just because we're producing so many events in August mm -hmm. that it's hard for me to, right. to spend that time and, and, and energy to do that. I'm capable. Um, but if we didn't have like four summer concerts and trans mm -hmm. performance, right. I would be able to, to set some side at some time aside. Mm -hmm. um, I will set time aside for your request, Ellen, to um, remove the websites uh, in the next week. Yeah, I'm not um, sure. It, from what you sent, it looks like you might be able to just check the boxes for what the jurors can see. Wow. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated because everybody's already like, there. it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, but yeah, it will take a little bit of time. I've already changed mm -hmm. that, but that's only people going forward now. I have to go in and log in as every specific user that has submitted a website and then remove it from their 
their profile. So it'll just take a little bit of data entry. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thanks for doing that. Mm -hmm. I really, it came up um, when Karen mentioned, um, when she shared that her, her screen share, she screen shared the, what the jurors can see and that we could see the website. And she was concerned that um, the jurors would be able to see the website, which is also often the name of the artist or the poet. And so it wouldn't be totally blind. And I was thinking of Alvilda, who will be jurying for the um, for visual arts, and she actually has submitted in past biennials. And you know, I I would just I just yeah. wanted to make sure that it was fully blind. No, I, I yeah I agree. Great, thanks everyone. Yeah. Um, it looks like anything else from biennial. No, thank, thank you, Ellen. No, I think that's been great at this. We'll meet soon. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, I have one side thing, uh, just because of my texting with uh, Arts Night Out. They're looking for an Arts Night Out coordinator right now. Uh, it comes with, it's a paid job. So if anybody wants to help um, coordinate for Arts Night Out, uh, you can just talk to the DNA. So Is there a job put listing? that. In, there's not a job listing yet. They're looking for just uh, word of mouth right now. There's no formal ad out yet. I'm just What's getting that. Pay? The paying position. I just asked. Um, I'll let you know as soon as I, I get the text back from Amy. Mm -hmm. So it's Amy Wilson K. Lane. She's the executive director of Downtown Northampton Association. So put that in the ether of somebody who's looking for like a side gig to do some cool coordination for Arts Night Out. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as I get the stipend, I'll let everybody know. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be a Northampton resident? No, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, so it looks like the next committee update is from cinema. I don't know if there's a cinema update. There's just no cinema happening. The okay. The, the cinema Northampton is on hiatus until next year. Okay. Great. As well as the Northampton Film Festival. Um, um, mm -hmm. Great. Um, so equity subcommittee. Alani, you want to talk or you want me to talk or how you prefer, my friend? Uh, I think we can all talk. All right, like... cool. Let's all talk. <laughs> it's all yeah. three of us. Yeah, all three of us. I mean, at the same time. Yeah, all at the same time. Um, no, so yeah. I mean, as the new chair, I mean, I I pretty much came on and like I literally have no idea like coming into the committee at all, like what to expect. Like the first meeting I attended, it was just me and Kent, and then last month it was me, Kent, and Jesse. So. I'm going to leave it to the two men to talk a little bit more about what previous uh, meetings had gone like, but we talked uh, substantially around like why, uh, what Ken was talking about earlier, like how did, how did equity just fall off the map? Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, I, that was pretty much what we, that was the, I mean, we talked for about an hour, probably around that issue and how it didn't seem to be important and why it wasn't and what we could, you know, how that felt really. And, and then we also talked about the, the, the thing that we'll, we'll be talking about later. I mean, it's just some of these concerns to me, again, they keep going back to the fact we don't know who we are. And we have this mission statement that would say we serve art for all people, but within that, what the hell does that mean? How do we mean that? And the fact that there is only the, the just us there felt really kind of, I don't want to say lonely, but it felt typical. Uh, I, let me just say that it felt typical. I'm just, uh, so often in these situations, in these spaces, I speak from my own experience where you're I'm brought in and then folks say, we want this. And then after one or two meetings, it's too difficult for, for I'm just going to put it on the table for white folks to deal with the fact that, oh, wow, 
these folks have been quiet for so long are a little pissed off and they they want what they want and they're a little impatient and they're doing it differently and they have hold and so it becomes this kind of like wrangling thing and so I just you know so the three of us were just I just sat there and looked at us I was grateful for Jesse's presence and I'll say that out loud again Jess it is so grateful that you were there and and seeing you know another black face here at least like okay I'm not in this room by myself but jeezy peasy folks you know talking about needing some blood I mean I feel like a vampire so that way I just kind of I, I, so that's really what, what we went through. I mean, Jess, please add what you wanted to. Um, thanks, Kent and Tulani. Um, I, don't, I don't know that I have any much more to add. Um, uh, <coughs> if, we're, if we're pushing off the conversation about the name change to new business, um, then I'll, I'll talk then about that. Um, but I think, you know, it, I think, I, I guess just, just doubling down on, on a little bit of what Kent said in terms of like, when I, when I first came on, um, I think there have been four or five meetings that I've been in attendance to, uh, for the, for the equity subcommittee, subcommittee. And the first two of them were very populate, populated. And obviously the last few have been fewer and fewer. Um, I like to give, part of me likes to give the benefit of the doubt and say that it was summer. The other part of me, um, you know, I think 100% agrees with Kent in that it's um, indicative of places like Northampton with a lot of liberal white people who like to step their toes into um, change and then uh, walk away pretty quickly. Um, and I don't want to necessarily say that anyone in this meeting is 100% uh, that, um, but looking at the makeup of Northampton mm there's a considerable number of, of people um, that fall into that category. So I appreciate that feedback. I'll take that feedback. I missed the last two meetings. I am on the subcommittee. I wasn't at them and I can give you reasons, but it doesn't matter. Um, I can also take, I'll also take responsibility for the, I don't know, there was some kind of clerical communication error from which Dana was like not included on the emails. So I don't know what happened there, but I just want to like say that Dana's made it clear that she wants to be a part of those meetings and wasn't getting communication about them. So if that was me, I apologize. And if it wasn't like whoever now is going to be organizing those meetings, please know that Dana wants to be included in it. I'll also name that um, Rachel is not going to those meetings anymore because she is no longer on the board, which I was going to name in new business. But, um, but I think that that is okay, right? Like she's not on the board anymore. So it could have felt like a huge drop off and it, and it does feel like a huge drop off. Um, but um, I guess another, another thing to kind of think about in our board membership and development structure is like what meeting, like what, do, what are the expectations of our subcommittee members? And like, if, a, if you can't make it to a meeting that's at a set time, is it, is it fair to ask to reschedule that meeting? It, or is it like, if you make a commitment, you have to go. And if you don't go, you, you should not be a part of the subcommittee meeting. So that's something I think maybe every subcommittee mm -hmm. can do some thinking about. Like if it holds up a, a committee, a subcommittee from the work they wanna do when people don't come, then that can't happen. So we need to have like real agreements about people's time and, and capacity so that we can av avoid situations like this. Cause no one should feel that way. Mm -hmm. Like it can be, ex maybe it can be explained away. Maybe it can't, maybe like it, every subcommittee should make, I, I would encourage every subcommittee, if you want to have this conversation to have a conversation about expectations, about meeting time and about commitment. Um, so I think that's a lesson I would glean from what I, what I'm hearing. Um, 
And I would, I would encourage, I'm going to say off the record, even though we're recording that sometimes a smaller group can get a lot more done. If no one's in the room, I just want to encourage y'all. If you have proposed, if you're like, this is the idea, this is what I want to propose. You are the, com in that meeting, you are the committee. And I want to encourage y'all to write whatever proposals or suggestions you want to do and say that it was a unanimous decision. And as, well, as the three of you, like bring that and share that with the board, if, <laughs> if that's something you want to do. All right. Well, you just opened the door, Jesse. You want to bring the thing that when we did finally talk about, which is what you've been sitting on too. I mean, since Danielle opened the door, as they say in law and order. Um, sure. I think uh, I, Something that I think that we have uh, in, in the equity subcommittee have been talking about, and I certainly have been thinking about since um, honestly first hearing what the um, performance actually was um, as uh, Belly of the Beast has supported the um, Northampton Arts Council uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the years in putting up posters and such, whenever trans performance came around, I honestly expected it to be, um, never having gone myself, I expected that it was a group of trans performers. Um, and I thought, oh, that's great. That's, that's a fabulous way of, uh, that the Arts Council is um, putting their support behind uh, something that is so positive for the community. Um, come to know that it is the word, the name of it is essentially antithetical to what um, that name means in, you know, the first part of the 21st century. Um, I think it's time for us to, uh, I don't know if it's our decision or if we need to urge them to um, make the ch name change. But if it is our decision, I would like to propose that we no longer call it trans performance, starting with next year. Mm -hmm. um, if it is not our decision and it is their decision, I would honestly like to propose that we withhold any sort of support until they uh, do a serious reconsideration on, on their name. The, who's they? They is us. Oh. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know who exactly is involved in making trans performance happen. Okay. Um, and so, if it is if it is us that makes the mm -hmm. makes the call on the name, then great because we can make that decision. Mm -hmm. If it's not us and we're just supporting the uh, group that or the groups that come together to do this performance. Um, then that's a slightly different tactic, but a discussion that I think still needs to be had. Mm -hmm. um, I loved your idea about, um, you know, really announcing at this event mm -hmm. coming up um, that we'll have a name change for next mm -hmm. year and to put up a, a box. I thought that was a great idea. Mm -hmm. And I think it addresses it like straight on. Yeah. And it's, it seems obvious when you guys brought it up. I, I mean, it just, yeah. No, you know, I mean, 30 years ago, no, it, it, yeah. it didn't occur to us. I mean, but, right, but right. Now, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. And I think you'll get a lot of support, you know, at the at the trans performance perform. for, a, for a new yeah. name change. <laughs> and Can I is, ask a question just for my own uh, information? Who's name, who named that, that? How did that name come about? It, prob it probably there? came back with Bob Silman. It had to do with people taking on the persona like local people taking on the persona of a, of a famous group and the whole trans was just coming from across it's like going across and that i mean using the the root the latin root of trans going across an area where we're crossing from our from one person crossing and, and assuming the 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 persona or whatever you want of a, right. of of um, somebody else and, and that's all it was about I mean okay so thank you so then let me ask if I can because I'm mm -hmm. trying to understand this in a way that we can yeah. grapple with it in a way that is since it's on the table so if that's the case who 
is responsible for it. How does that happen now? Is this is this name still owned by an ad hoc group of artists? No, is it, it something that NAC yeah. calls it this or what? Basically, it's it's a fundraiser for the Arts Council. It's an Arts Council summer fundraiser. So it really is us. We okay. own it. It's part of us. It's the Arts okay. Council. It's one, an arts event that we sponsored um, 30 years ago. And it was um, mainly to, to make money in the summer and to get you know schools and people involved in some a summertime thing. And it had to do with um, you know getting uh, the bands, et cetera, and um, together. And it was just, that's all it was, was just just getting together. It had nothing, and and, and an arts event, and um, that's all it was. I mean, that's- Okay, so my and next question the, uh, becomes, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, second. I'm a bit like a, an, either a detective or a lawyer. I'm sorry, okay. it's my process. But, but the next step then is why, if it's our name, we can why it. wait till next year? And why not, in if we unless the publicity's already been done and out, why not say what used to be the trans you know, to change to show that we are in transition mm. now, that we live in the 21st century, and that NAC is nice. in yeah. transition mm -hmm. at this moment to own the fact that we used to step in doggy do. And now we don't anymore. And so yeah. we're willing, we don't know what the name will be. Help us move this new name forward, but we don't want this. So be able to do it in a way that's positive and doesn't hold on to the past. It reminds me, I used to live in Montague brief and the, you know this whole thing with the mascot i remember this and folks would would bring their kids up crying that they're never going to see another indian if if they took their mascot from them and let's wait till next year let's wait till this and yeah. it's like my you know my indigenous friends and some of us are really like no it's now mm. it's now we if we live in this quote unquote progressive northampton this is an abomination of a name in the 21st century let's Let's change it. Let's be forward thinking. Let's do it now. Yeah. I, I think my only thing, I mean, no, I agree with you, but I think getting out the publicity and things like that, or, or how, you know, Brian, I would kind of defer to you in terms of how, how, how to do it. That's fine. You know, I, by all means, I mean, it's taken, you know, things are, things are different. I mean, I agree with you totally. And, and I think that part of the, the thing back then, it was just using again, you know, the word like transition, it means a, a cross. And that was all it was meant at the time. And, and, you know, so that, that was, and that was it. That was then. And this is now. So let's right. move. But, but thank you for bringing up Brian, because Brian, I think maybe part of this thing is, is for example, I think if we helped you get the transition stuff out, so the A is not all on your back. I mean, again, these are kind of things I get pumped as hell about, to be truthful. I'd go on the Montish if we had something clear that the reason why and that we, it was delineated clearly why we're doing this and what we're up to. Deal with Monty. I know a young woman on the Gazette that's always looking for stories. You know, I mean, you do it. I'm happy to help with, with these aspects of these things. So it doesn't fall on you. I just want us to move forward and not wait till next year. I appreciate I appreciate all of that, Ken. I really do. We're a month out. The presses are already out. If we want to change it, we can. Um, I, again, if we want to put everything on the table, Ken, you, you mentioned your support like that for the Artist Relief Fund, mm -hmm. um, for the Poet Laureate. And I made some, uh, you know, outreach to you, and I, I didn't. I didn't feel like I get. I got the support from you for those two endeavors that for you talked about. Gloria, for the poet laureate, I've been in that. Ask anybody on that committee. You're, I know you're doing oh, the, you the work admin, but like going on a radio show and like I, you never thing. contacted me. I thought I. I, I well, maybe I'm. Um, you I'm, never caught. I said I do it, and you never contacted me. Okay. I'm not begging you. I said, contact me, I'll do it. I not heard an email or a text okay. or a phone call, Brian. So I don't uh, mean to I, yell at you, but that's on okay. you. That's not on me. Okay. I, I just, I felt, I felt otherwise, but uh, that's fine. Uh, going forward, uh, I would love to hear a campaign to advertise, uh, advertise this event. 
Um, uh, I inherited it. I see some inherent issues with the name. Uh, mm. I don't, I wouldn't characterize it as an abomination from my perspective. Obviously I'm from a different, uh, uh, my perspective is a lot different than somebody who's trans. Mm. Um, I think it's very problematic and I do want to change it. And there's been many discussions around the particular event. Uh, I would like really good ideas. And I think the idea of what Jesse brought up and what you were bringing up and what we were talking about is we're going out to the community. The marketing campaign would be mm. help us change the name of trans performance is a really good idea. And we can transition that. But unfortunately I have, there was a poster made. Um, it's August 17th and we can switch up the marketing right now and get another poster made or whatever. But I just need some help putting together branding and marketing around that to help change the name if we're doing it this year. What's the name? I, I also want to suggest that com I, from my perspective, I think community input on what the name changes to have that, like there's, there's, I think there would be a missed opportunity for us to spend the next half hour deciding on a name or to send a group of us off to decide on a name. Like I, I think from my perspective as, and I also understand like the, the work of changing all of the marketing is, I don't think that's a sound uh, communication strategy for an event that's definitely happening. Um, I would say that at the event, I think it makes sense. To, well, I don't know. I think I'm going to make a move to vote that we change the name mm -hmm. and decide on the procedure for that soon. And I Can think I make at the next, at the event, I think it'd be great if anyone wants to lead like an outreach team. Like I think most of us are going to be volunteering at that event, but set up a station for, for thoughts, feedback, discussion, talk to the performers backstage about it. Um, and take those suggestions and bring them back. And maybe it's equity subcommittee, maybe it's public art, maybe it's events and music, maybe it's all of us um, look through those suge suggestions and actually spend a full meeting, like deciding what the name will be next year and then announce it to folks and roll it out next year. Um, Can I say something? Uh, sh sure, and then I know just you have your hand up, so oh, maybe. Sure. Oh, Lori, go ahead. You sure? Yeah, please. Um, I don't agree, Kent. I'm sorry to disagree with you. I think it's way too late to change the name for this year. I think it's important that we include the public in the, in the concept of changing the name, that an announcement could be made at the event itself. I think it will confuse people if we change it now and create enormous pressure in, in the next figurative five minutes, but actual four weeks to try to do that now. And I think it requires some thought and some thinking and some contributions. And it's not something that should happen overnight because we want to take this carefully and thoroughly to discussion and not jump into something that we're later unhappy with because we decided too fast. And so I respectfully disagree with you, Kent. I'm done. That's okay. I mean, I, you know, we're here to disagree, to disagree. I, I'm not challenging you. I just know that for me to volunteer at an event that calls itself anything trans, that I don't have to be trans to feel how badly that feels. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. And so for me, I'm looking at not only the name change, but the fact that we're asked to volunteer for this there's something, it'd be like me, the, the folks saying, well, now, Kent, there's this Christian right thing with the Klan. It's okay. <laughs> we'll deal with this shit later. It's like, no, I ain't dealing. I, you know, I want to address this now. I'm sorry. You have every right. It is a last minute thing. So you may be correct, but I'm just still feeling what I feel. And I think it's important to say that. I don't mean to demean sure. you, Lori, and I don't mean to argue with you. I, I don't feel argued with. I just want to respond to say I completely respect your, your feeling and your thought and your energy because I'm always someone who jumps too fast and then, uh-oh. So, so I understand that way of thinking, but I also think it's bigger than, well, no, that's the wrong word. I think this is a community event that is already expected to be in under that title and that we need to educate people to a new title. And I, I have never liked the name from the get-go. 
I found it offensive um, for similar reasons, but I, I don't think it should happen now. So, and, and all due respect to how anybody feels about this, but there it is. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to have an interim name, like we change it so that this year's is not called trans performance and that can be announced with the potential that it's, we're looking for community input for a new name. I mean, I actually think it's a brilliant marketing opportunity mm -hmm. yeah, for an event that's communi a community event to say, we've evaluated this. I know it's one month out, so it's obviously that, there's work that has to be done, but I think that we are all willing to help do that work, but would need clear direction of what it entails and how we need to get it done. Dana, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here. Um, I appreciate what Danielle said. I appreciate what you said, Dana. I think that uh, jumping on both of those things, and this is something that um, anyway. Um, I think we, we do have an opportunity here to be able to announce four weeks is, per, is enough time to be able to announce when uh, talking about this publicly, we can go on some radio shows, we can do whatever we can to do that we have reevaluated that this name is not something that we're gonna move forward with, um, that we are at this year's event we are looking forward to um, reaching out to the community at large and, and getting their feedback on what um, this event should be called moving forward. Um, you know, not necessarily that we're advertising or not advertising that we're changing the name this year, but just always when we're talking about it, have it be a opportunity to acknowledge the fact that in this day and age, we are not happy with what this name represents and that many of us on the board, if not all of us on the board, are um, looking for what to move towards. Well, well articulated, Jesse. I mean, it looks like you have your hand up. Do you want to <laughs> jump in here? You talking to me? No, oh. I was just going to say I, I I agree with uh, what, a lot of what everyone talking to me. Um, I think that what I would suggest that we do is we make the announcement at the event. Um, yes. You know, I think some of the you know the ideas are going on radio or do what of these other things, but you're going to have like a limited audience. Like I never listen to local radio, like I'm sure there's a lot of people, so you're going to miss some of this stuff. So I would, what I think we do is anything. I think it's changing it now. I think it comes off as like a haste move. Um, so what I would suggest we do is at the event we say like you know we do a brief education, kind of like what we did just now, where Kent, you know, you just learned. I was called that in the first place, right? So say so this is how it started. We're going to move it. This is the last time we're going to do it. We're going to be asking for community input. We don't really necessarily have to like get into details about it, how we're going to collect that yet. Because again, I don't think we have the time to arrange that in just a month. But just say like, this is going to be the last time that it's called this. We're going to move forward, recognizing X, Y, and Z reasons. And, you know, and then go from there. I think anything else could... It's problematic. I think somebody mentioned communication. And I think it's a very valid thing that could happen. Um, and so that's what I would recommend that we go forward and do. I guess I'm, in, I'm inclined to uh, agree with Eamon. And, and, I, and I also had, an, had another idea about another way of acknowledging the the use of the word and that is you know part of the money that's raised um from the the event is money that the arts council gives to schools and i'm wondering if one of the things that we could do is to increase the amount of money that we give to schools and designate it for um uh support in the schools for trans or um, 
uh, you know, gender kind of uh, programs that are going on in the schools to support those students who, who may identify as such. And I think that, you know, that would be another way when we, when we talk about the desire to change and change the name that we also, you know, it's like putting your money where the mouth, your mouth is, you know, so it was just an idea that I had. I didn't know if that was an option. I love the idea of um, having some of this money go to um, gender non-conforming and uh, non-binary um, individuals, especially youth. Um, I don't, I don't know. I haven't dealt with the school system here. I don't know if they are as a whole open to be doing something like that, or if there's going to be um, pushback from PTOs or other things that are, um, you know, that that would make our contribution um, not happen. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there are there are some organizations in schools that are dealing with the issues, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the schools. You know, I, you know, it could be given to some organizations outside of the schools that work with youth as well. So, I, you know, it was just an idea that I had as a way of 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 moving this forward and also showing the, our support for the change and the community. Yeah, totally. No, I love the fact. I love the idea of doing it in schools because it adds an education. It adds, you know, the um, the the knowledge and the um, exposure to something like that from a young age, which is really what we're all looking to kind of push push forward and expose, um, you know, the youth to more culture earlier. Um, I'm I'm all for that. I just I just don't know the politics of the school systems here and if there would be issues um, around this when it gets to be a thing. I just, as I listen to everyone uh, give their piece, I understand our processes and how we are understanding on the programmatic idea that there isn't enough time. I'm also completely understanding that there is an immediate and that we all agree that this is a change that needs to occur. I do want us to think about the fact that this name is 30 years old, right? That is history that I'm just learning today. Um, and that as we move forward, that we at some point all have come up with our brains, I would say in the past, at least past few years that this was probably problematic. And today we're all saying we're gonna hold off another year. I just want us to be really aware that that is something that is a, that is a choice that we are making. Um, and as part of that equity committee, that this is something that I get it. It's gonna, it's gotta go run through the mill. It's a choice that we're all making collectively, but that is a choice that we are making and saying, we're gonna hold off another year, even though we all agree that this is a choice that needs to be made and changed. Can so, I would sort of add, like add to that, like, which I totally get and I understand, I, but I think what would be different is that we're saying like at the actual thing, we're going to say we're starting this now. So we're not like punting, I wouldn't call it punting or kicking off or putting, we're saying like, all right, this is going to be the last one. We are starting the pro, we're, just, you know, we're doing it then. Um, I, I would just say that that's a little bit different in my eyes. But can I, I ask a question, Amon? Like, for example, Jesse. You have a business in downtown Northampton where one of those signs is going to be. How do you feel about a sign saying trans performance in your shop? How do you feel about that? I mean, not to put you on the spot, but I mean, you know, th this is what we're talking about, right? Um, I don't think we have one up this year, and I wouldn't want to put one up this year. So I'm looking at... Um... Yeah, so I'm just seeing Brian wrote in the chat for anyone who's not reading the chat, Brian shared, um, we can change the name of this year's show to Unsung Heroes easily. It will cost money to change the assets. So 
I think by the assets, I'm, I can share my screen with you. I'm looking at the Facebook event. Like we can change, I, I'm, and I'm looking at the graphic design. It, it looks like it would be relatively easy to just remove trans performance from the top of the graphic design and leave it as un, unsung music or unsung heroes and just add something that says live music. Um, that feels doable, but there's a website that like is used to sell tickets there. I can see that there are ads running right now already online for this event. And like, we'd have to rerun all of those ads, right? I'm not so, running any ads. Uh, I, they're not running on Facebook right now. There's not a boost. I haven't boosted anything. Oh, well then I it just think. has really good organic reach. I think. Well, okay, then that's even better. I think it is possible to do a messy phase out of the name. I just want to say that. And I think it's okay if it's messy. And I think it's okay to have some posters that are already out and try to have them fixed and some posters that omit trans performance and just say live music at the top or, or put unsung heroes at the top and then say live music to benefit the arts or arts benefit or something. I think that's okay and possibly doable that it'll cost a little bit of money, but Brian seems willing to do it and there might be budget for it. And I think that we can acknowledge the messiness of it being a late decision. And if we're trying to like actually get a little bit out of white supremacy culture, I think we can acknowledge the messiness at the event. We can say we we're coming out of a pandemic. This is our first major live event where I know there are going to be smaller things, but this is our first major live event after a pandemic. And um, we're calling this event Unsung Heroes. People who know it as trans performance will still know it as trans performance. I think some of it will be out there. I don't know that we're going to necessarily be able to change the ticketing website. And I'm sure Brian can comment more on the things that are going to be take longer to change. But I think it's okay if it's messy. It's messy. Look how messy we are all being tonight, right? Like, it's okay if it's messy and it's okay to be transparent with our messiness. And it's okay to say we're, we did the best we could to start phasing that name out this year. This is the last time we're going to use it and we welcome your input. I think it is worthwhile as Eamon commented in the chat to think about what the process is for a name change. I also think that being intentional about that process does not preclude us from soliciting feedback at the event. So I, and I'm happy to all, I, vol I can volunteer to like run that booth or that table or I, I, if others want to, that's fine, but I'm happy to like be the one who does that if they're, if everyone else is all hands on deck. Um, to set up whiteboards or post-it notes and just ask people to write down some names and we can take that. And, if, and as we all vote, we can decide if it's five that we wanna vote on, if we wanna put that for public, but we can decide on a process after the fact, but I think it's an awesome opportunity to solicit some feedback from folks. Um, and I'm happy to do that and buy the post-it notes or sticky papers or whatever it is in the markers and, 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 and do that and then type it up and share it out um, with folks. Does that feel like that's an in-between? It's like, we're not getting rid of it and changing it. We're not keeping it full steam ahead. It's messy, but so is the process of like undoing something that was harmful. Does that feel okay to folks? I, I think as long as people who will be, people who, who look forward to this event every year, you know, the packs of teenagers and middle schoolers running around and seeing their friends for the first time, um, that they understand that this is the trans perform the, what has always been known as the trans performance. So that, cause people really look forward to this particular event. And, um, you know, so people should know that. Right. But at the same time- Cause if it's called Just Unsung Heroes, which actually I think is a good name. Oh, no, um, I I think they'll they'll wonder, oh, is this they won't know that it's the trans performance. Right. But to your or point, just, uh, uh, you know, that there would be some acknowledgement of that in the postering or whatever happens, you know, before known as, you know, trans performance or you know, new name to be announced next year or whatever. But just so that things. people know that, that this is the event that the Arts Council runs in the summer. It's a big event. It's a big fundraiser for us and for the school system. We should not, you know, make use Wait of that. Up. No, I'm just going to say really quickly, though, that of the six young poet laureates that we had in application, the great majority of them identified as non-binary. 
And so I think it's a bigger invitation to those young people that to see that, wow, the Northampton Arts Council is moving forward with us, right? I mean, so I just think that's pretty cool. So I was confused on some of the council members, and, and, and this is just an issue I have uh, with language around this particular event of abomination, far right, Christian right. It's a, an event that's raised over $750,000 for arts projects, for school arts enrichment in the public schools. And to, to like take something that of like over 150 community members have volunteered their time and energy and, 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 and succinctly say it's an abomination or it's a far right Christian thing is something that I, I just feel like is, it, it's a mistake that is being changed, but to, to take it and call it that is something that I just felt confused about. Okay, um, well, thank you. Since I'm the one that said it, I will say it felt like it to me. And the fact that I don't mean to dis, uh, to disrespect anybody's time and money. However, I will, as a person, as a black person, and that's the only way I can show up here. I have seen lots. I sat at the no hotel at the historic Northampton event a couple years ago before the pandemic, when they stood up and sang, this land is my land, that song. And they said they changed it to this, this street is our street. I had brought an indigenous friend with me. She wept. Rhonda ran out of there and fucking, excuse my, and, and wept. Okay. <laughs> so to me, I don't mean to demean your experience, but to me, I work hand in glove. My work partner in the work I do is non-binary. We love each other and we are there 100%. I cannot in any shape or form support something that feels this way to me. I'm not saying it feels that way to you, but if we're supposed to be authentic and you're asking us to show up and I was invited to come yeah. onto this committee to bring who I am, this is who I am. And it feels that way. Okay, it feels like an assault on me because where does this language come from 30 years ago? And how do we ignore it till up and there? Has a history to it. This is part of the whole education of, of equity and inclusion process. Yeah. It's understanding language and words. And so that to me, these if they're hitting at me, I can either pretend that they don't hit me I can, I, I can go back to drinking, which I stopped doing, or I can be honest and show up and say, hey, this is bothersome to me at this level. I want to talk about it. So I, I added in the chat, I, I guess I'm, I'm wondering if including language formerly known as or including transperformance in parentheses to me, that's still actually putting that name out there. Does, does that feel right to folks to have formerly known as, or, or does, does that work as a, as a way of indicating that it's on its way out or not? Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, in some ways to me, that might be even like worse. But, uh, yeah. it's just that like we're saying like, oh, hey, here's this thing, but it was also called this thing, which, you know, we're trying to avoid. So I don't know if like I would, you know, if, if you're, if, people, if the end decision or an end result is like, we're going to go with some temporary name for this year, I don't know if I, if that helps or if, if it, you know, might worsen the problem because we're saying we're changing it, but it was also this thing, you know, like, uh, I don't know, but I mean, I stand by my original, like, I think we're going after something that needs a little bit more thought than a month is going to allow, um, but I think for, you know, a variety of reasons, like, you know, client, attendee, confusion, how going about the right process for this. Um, I think there's, you know, we're inviting problems, but even like unsung hero that brings its own issues. Like, you know, does that, I, so I think, you know, there's lots of rushing to something that could be, you know, it's not well thought out is my thing. I think clients and audiences are smarter than you are giving them credit for. I don't think there are that many summer arts events that happen here that people look forward to. I don't think we need to cite the name change. I really do believe that people will figure it out. If we make a Facebook post about it, that will be sufficient advertising. 
Oh, Dana, not, not to discount your not to discount your points, Dana. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Amon. One channel, one channel is not going to solve a problem. It's a whole communication strategy and plan that would be needed. Um, and I think you know, but there's lots of examples you know in the world today where you think something would be very obvious and people just don't get it. So I I, I respectfully disagree with that point. I I want to change the name. I want to just get rid of it, Dana. But you know those points about marketing. I, I I'm you know I, I have a different experience from my mom. My point of like there are a lot of summer events that happen here. Um, I've been in the community for a while, so I, I and I'm also like plugged in, so I know what's happening. There's two concerts at Book Park the day after and the day before by DSP shows. Two days before there's a pot concert by Signature Sean, but that doesn't matter. Like. There, people will be confused, but it's a divorce here. We should get rid of the name and just cut it and call it a day. And then I really need the community and the committee to come up with a brand name because we change the theme every year. That's the fun of this particular show. We talk to the community members that all these musicians, these 20 bands that donate their time. And we all work together to come up with a theme. Like last year was Lookstock. So they performed all the songs at Woodstock. This year, we looked at every band that ever performed whatever was covered at Trans Performance, and we pulled all the ones that weren't covered out, and we had them do that. So because the theme changes every year, we have to have some kind of solid anchor foundation name to call it. You know, uh, I tried to add a qualifier this year, so it's to call it like live tribute music, you know, concert or something, but that's too many words and it's too messy, so... I just want to like, you know, hopefully us as a, as a council and the com community can come up with something where we can have, call it something else, like, you know, like living cover band. In joy. Sure. Like that, something, anything that is like a good marketing piece where, cause again, it's a fundraiser. It's to make money, to donate. We donated $10,000 to schools last year, particularly for the arts enrichment. So it, we have to look at it as a business as well. Um, and that's where I think, but I'm, I, I'm on board with a divorcing. I've been in from the beginning. Um, and, uh, I just want and unsung heroes is easy. We can take, I can change, I can have the poster designer to, to pull that off and we can, I can go in and change everything and try to, to start over again. Um, yeah, and Brian, and you it'll went, just cost that arts council in it, because I think it also, I think it'll, it'll, people will make the connection. It's the arts council and stuff like that. Yeah. I think that, that's important. Because if you say arts event, they won't even know what, they won't make that connection. Yeah. Can and I, it I, as I arts think it's good. Go ahead. I was uh, just wondering if we could refer to it as arts benefit concert colon um, unsung heroes. I don't think we need Northampton Arts Council. Like our logo goes down the bottom or it's like presented by Northampton Arts Council and supported Northampton Public Schools. All that is gonna be like included elsewhere. So is, does that, I, I think Arts Benefit Concert, like whether people knew it as trans performance in the past or not, that's the, something that would appeal. Like <laughs> I think everyone will get what that means and be excited about it. Um, Hopefully, I think our target audience will know what that means and be excited about it if they were excited about trans performance. What if we change it just a little bit to Arts Council Benefit, colon, Unsung Heroes? I think that would be. I have nothing against Arts Benefit Concert, but I think, mm -hmm. I think yeah, I if, we're taking, if we're taking <laughs> it's away- It's so plain. It's, we're like arts, we can come up with a better name. Not, that, I'm, I might do that. Like I might just come up with something like that just to, to cover it because it's a time frame. But like, we got to come up with something that is like, we're creatives. Like we got to come up with something that's really catchy. Right. Like, we're we're not, do next year. We're, we're not talking about this for permanent. We're oh, just talking okay, about okay. temporary fix yeah, for, yeah. for this year yeah. because I think it's still important for us to engage the community and to make this announcement at the concert and to get their feedback at the concert. So all of that stuff I think should still be in place and we'll be looking at all of the, you know, we'll have eight months to look at all of the feedback from the community and come up right. with something that right. will be replacing trans performance. Brian, what your that, suggestion, what, Jesse? What, what, what about the idea of saying what just calling it the performance, you know, you know, that's, I mean, it's, 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 um, it's, it looks similar enough, 
you know, for the people who are familiar and looking for it, because, you know, I can tell you that when my sons who are now in their early thirties were um, little kids, we came to dance at this mm -hmm. event. You know, there are families like ours, you know, Ellen talked about the, the young kids, the adolescents who came to these events, but there are lots of families who come to these events, families and, and, and people meet each other. And there is, you know, I'm wondering about what the impact of that is, you know, that the name is for those people, mm -hmm. uh, aside from the meaning of the word, you know, just what the association with the event. Yeah. And so, you know, if you had it, if it was called the performance and then unsung heroes, you know, and then we did all the other conversation about the transition. I, I, yeah, I, I, I actually like. I wouldn't even. I would even call it just performance. Like I like that. That just performance. It's less syllables, and it does have some affiliation. But I don't know if that is going to be take. Is that going to be doable? Like performance, and then the theme after because what it is it's like all these local bands that are already that all the local bands that play in it are not cover bands these are people who create their own original music mm -hmm. and once a year they come together and they have fun together right. and they all play their favorite stuff and it's like it's a it's like a it's the only reason we get away with them not paying them is because we feed them really well backstage. All the mm -hmm. local musicians get to hang out in the backstage and like actually have conversations with each other which mm -hmm. they never get to do. And so the idea of calling it performance is like, uh, I think something that I could definitely um, talk to the staff about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's the best one that has legs right now for me. I don't know what uh, Jesse you feel or can't you feel about that? Is that okay? I like that. So it would be performance, unsung heroes. And then underneath it would say live tribute music fundraiser, which is what the staff had decided. That's fine. Do we want to vote on it? Yes. As our interim, okay, I moved to rename Trans Performance um, uh, for this year only performance, Unsung Heroes live tribute music fundraiser pending uh, or including a community feedback um, process for renaming the mm -hmm. brand of the concert in future years. That's a lot. <laughs> Does all that need to go on the poster? I think. No, no, no. Oh, I just made a motion. Oh, I see. Oh, so I'm making a okay. motion to change this the name not, of uh, these notes are are a bear to write up tonight. I'll just let you know. So I can, <laughs> I can write this section. I'm making a motion to change the name of Trans Performance to Performance Unsung Heroes right, Live see. Tribute Music Fundraiser for this year and add a process by which we change it for future years. Yes. Someone want a second? I'll second it. Danielle, I just have a, a question about that because how you uh, typed it up is asterisk performance unsung heroes. It's it's sorry, I was just correcting a typo in the first version. Okay, because I, I asterisk un, asterisk performance uh, seems like we're no. I'm sorry, it was just yeah. a typo. I, well, I made a typo in the first version, yep. and also my my paste is off. Sorry about that. My copy paste keys are all broken on my computer. So that's the the most recent version sent at eight fifty four, is the correct one. I was using star as a corrective device, mm -hmm. definitely not as a fill in for no. trans or anything else. Totally understand, just wanted to make that clear. Um, I second if nobody else has. All in favor? Aye. Okay, <laughs> voted. Thank you, equity subcommittee. Um, I don't think we have an update from the grant rounds unless Brian, the checks have gone out for those awards. Everybody got their check and they're all cashing them and they're very happy. Thank you. Um, um, and just, just before you jump on, Danielle, um, go on. I think that it's that we should um, have a conversation maybe at our next meeting about grants, because I think we want to do some thinking about, you know, our our values and, and how are we going to respond to the 
you know, the LCC, assuming that we get the money again in the fall. So just for, for next time's agenda. I appreciate the forward thinking. I think the grants committee should meet and I would encourage us to invite the equity committee to join. So we think Thank about that, Dan. Yeah, so well, I was going to suggest that we join into that committee too, because I'm working. I have been working up language for us to put out there for, to clarify what it is we're asking and how it comes into us. Great. So, so Freeman, can you um, convene that meeting of the Equity and Grants Subcommittee? Hmm? Yes. Together. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll have an update at the next meeting, hopefully. Um, on board membership and development, um, Rachel Hart has um, resigned from the Arts Council because she's moving, and I I don't have it up. I wanted to share, like she shared some very kind wow. words about her experience, so I just wanted to like share that with folks. Um, but she um, moved to another neighborhood and wants to get involved in the community there, so we're going to miss her, but um, she... Uh, she said, um, she said that um, our work together has meant so much to me. I value what we've been able to do for our Northampton community. And I appreciate um, all the efforts that everyone has made to make this work possible. It's been a true pleasure to work together. Please keep me on the volunteer list as I'd love the occasional Aww. chance to volunteer at an NAC event. Um, and I'd be happy to join for a final grants meeting if that would help with, um, if that would help. and. Also, she volunteered to collect any notes for future planning um, around that work. So she is um, leaving and I'm really sad about that, but that means that we also have a board vacancy, another board vacancy. So um, I know we're a bit of a, a little bit, I want to, I don't want to say hot mess on public record, but I'm going to go ahead and name it. Um, we're a little bit of a hot mess. Uh, there's room for grow and <laughs> room to improve, obviously. But if you have any folks that would like to be a part of that process, um, we have vacancies on this board. So um, I encourage folks to, if you feel comfortable, invite folks to, to join in. Um, so, Daniel, what do you think about Zoe? She doesn't live in Florence, Northampton, or Leeds. Really? I thought, lives I thought in they Williamsburg. Moved to lives in Williamsburg. She lives no, in not Williamsburg. that Zoe. Our, oh. uh, I can't think of Zoe's last name. Who used to be my tenant? Oh, Zoe Tuck? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought that they relocated to the Bay Area. Well, unless they, they moved after this, but they moved. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I, I've I shared the board outreach email with folks. If you've okay. got everyone, yeah. Everyone, welcome. I'm sure they oh, do well, a wonderful poetry reading series and are a wonderful yeah, community yeah. activist. And 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 Kathy has the connection, but but I would like it to be as like open and public as possible. So I think we can also yeah. think about what it would mean to share this on our Facebook page mm -hmm. and and elsewhere. Um, but in the meantime, if folks want to do any personal outreach or individual outreach or okay. to your list serves that you're on, I would encourage it. I have their email. Okay. Um, I also added to my notes that I, I'm going to be maybe, I don't know, Kent, if you want to touch base in the coming weeks about thinking about um, a retreat, if anyone else wants to be a part of that, this would be the subcommittee, I think that would, would organize around that work. So um, if anyone else is, is interested, then feel free to email me or Kent. Um, and Maybe both together. So mm -hmm. Email me uh, and right. Kent. Yep, yeah. exactly. Email us both together. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you, Kent. I have a bit of a rewind question from about an hour or more ago. You said all the equity trainers are at capacity. And my question is, until when? Um, I, I got no's from people that I reached out to um, mm -hmm. saying that they were at capacity. And I... I thanked them okay. and left it there. I didn't say, but when are you going to be free? But I will follow up with folks okay. um, at some point, Kent. I would know. Uh, yeah, I was just saying my own work and my work with Ange, we are already booking into next year. 
I mean, wow. as, mm -hmm. because, you know, a lot of orgs are now going, oh, we better do something about things. So some of this work may drop off once you get involved with stuff. But right now, I think most people are really, and, you know, the, the pandemic has sort of slipped into a different gear so that folks are now having to travel and things like that. So it's a little, it, it's hard to name, but it's, I, I, I can see it's, it's quite, that's why I thought we could start with smaller work rather than the bigger work and wait that, so that we're not just on hold. Agree, awesome. Um, the other thing that I wanted to raise in this like board membership section is that um, I just want to remind people that Lori has offered to host us for a potluck on um, Sunday, July 25th mm -hmm. from 5 to 8 p.m. at 18 Ridgewood Terrace. Mm -hmm. Brian sent out a Google Calendar invite, which folks can reply yes or no to. Mm -hmm. And um, Lori, do you want to share anything else about like uh, chairs and RSVPs that you need and a rain date? Well, we talked about, a, Danielle and I talked about a rain date. Uh, the weather has not exactly been encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> we can go inside. My house is big enough. Um, mm. But if there's a rain date, I think, I think people are probably pretty booked for the balance of the summer. I know Freeman is uh, very booked. <laughs> And I don't, I don't know about everybody else, but I wondered if the second weekend in October would be an option for anyone. Yeah, if I I'm not October, excuse me, I'll be away then, September. Um, so maybe we have a rain date, maybe we don't. Um, if it looks like it's gonna be outdoors on the 25th as planned, I need people to bring chairs. And it's a potluck, okay. we can, divide it up alphabetically or just hit or miss people can bring what they want but I definitely need everyone to bring a chair if it's going to be outside because I don't have enough okay. I do have another piece of news on a different subject so do you want to finish this first Danielle yeah is there, can, can, can I, oh I'm sorry I didn't I just want to know is there anything we should bring other than a chair yes it's a potluck okay. everybody should bring something to eat and Bring your own booze if you want and right. seltzer and I'll have some stuff too. Is is there like a master list or something so we don't get, you know, 12 green bean casseroles? Well, I <laughs> I thought maybe we could divide it up al f alphabetically, you know, A through M or whatever, bring a I, meal I thing. Know what and I want to bring. We could do it that way. Um, I would love to have a master list. I think that would be helpful. Oh, Jesse, you're going to bring the, all the gas. So um, would can, it, it be okay if maybe question? we send a Google? Oh, go ahead. Yes. Just, are there any, I mean, what I usually make is a cheesecake. And so, you know, because it's so gluten-free people can have things. But but I need to know, you know, do people people have nut allergies or, or um, you know, anything else that, you know, allergies and things like that, that we should be aware of when we... If, well, unless you don't want me to bring a cheesecake, it's fine. I mean, the alternative to that is bring what you bring and people who have allergies okay. need to be responsible for themselves because, yeah. you know, with 12 or 15 people, you're going to get 12 or different, 15 different sets of allergies. Yeah. And I suggest that if people are bringing their own thing to at least list on the card so that people that are gluten-free mm -hmm. would see that, oh, there's gluten in this or whatever. I mean, just sure. if you're making it, you know what you're that's in. a good yeah, idea, yeah. Good point. I will be bringing something gluten-free and dairy-free and probably most nut-free. Like I'm allergic to everything. So I can bring a, a sensitivity item <laughs> for people, <laughs> but like I'm also allergic to avocado, right? So like I'll bring something that suits my allergy and I can let people know in advance. So if anyone else in the room is like, oh, I have all these mm -hmm. things, I can bring a sensitivity. Yes, thank you, Jenna. Sensitivity <laughs> casserole or something. Most of the ingredients <laughs> is a I have a yeah. question. Um, can I, I'd like, to, I'd love to extend an invite to Karen Schofield. Is of that course. okay with everybody? That'd be great. Of be course. Great. Yeah, excellent. Great. I think it'd be great to also invite um, Zoe and yeah. any other like and our youth poet laureate. Yeah, our youth but poet laureate. Make sure Rachel comes. Right. Definitely. Our youth, Rachel our youth come. poet laureates, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. If they're up to it, and maybe. I would say maybe uh -huh. let's not expect 
the, the youth boat laureates to necessarily bring anything, but yeah. they can just come and right. hopefully um, they'll feel comfortable. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Well, the youth poet laureate might be the only person in that age group and might be very yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah, true that. So I think we shouldn't do that. But certainly Karen and certainly Rachel and certainly significant others. Mm. Is Ashland still on the board? Yeah. I, I've i sent a few outreach emails to check in and I haven't heard back yet, so I'm Same not here. sure. So can so. I tell my other news, which has nothing to do with the gathering? Mm -hmm. Sure. We are going to be the recipient of the Roundup to the Next Dollar program at the food, the River Valley Co-op for the mm -hmm. month of November. Somebody mm -hmm. already got Yay! the number. Yeah, I was really happy with that. Fantastic. Oh, Thank you so much. An hour before the meeting. So I'm very Amazing, excited. Lori, that is great. That's awesome. Is that both stores? Is that Northampton and East Hampton? You know, I didn't ask that question, but I can only assume so. And that means it's much more money than we thought. I yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> the same store, out, so Brian. Duh. Right. Wow. Uh, I just want to thank the board for changing the name of Trans Performance. Mm, that's good. Um, Lori, to to hop on that, I've been in touch with. Um, Cornucopia and yeah. I'm looking into their POS system to see if they can do a um, or how easy it is for them to do a roundup um, because they're they're very much on board for doing that for us. Um, if they can't do it via their POS system, then they're willing to do it as like a um, you know a jar. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as I hear back from them, you know okay. we'll start talking about. It when that can happen, but I'm I'm definitely aiming towards the holidays as well for that. Great. Uh, December had already been taken. Um, and I think people are already getting into that mood in November. And and I'm excited, Brian, that you pointed out about the East Hampton store. I've, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I live so near the one that are the old one that I didn't think of it, but great. Can't wait. I'll great call news. and confirm that. But I can't imagine that it, it isn't both stores. The new store is beautiful. It's closer to my house. So I oh, go I there. I <laughs> nice. Good. Guys, I'm, I'm sorry to um, leave, but yeah. we had out of towners arrive at the beginning of this meeting and I'd really like to see them. Um, <laughs> so Thanks, I'm gonna Ellen. say good night. I think yeah. Kathy and Ken can catch up to date with the um, Poet Laureate. Yeah. Thank the you so much. I'll send out and some good night, everybody. Have really. a good time. Yeah. OK. Bye. Danielle, Thanks, are, are we going to do the rest of the information about the gathering by, by email and Google Docs or whatever? Um, can, we, can we have just a show of hands of folks that are planning to attend? Um, I'm going to come. <laughs> all right. You better come, Lori, right? All right. So it looks like most of us are, Lori, is that what you need for a head count? Does that work? For I don't a even count? really need a head count except from okay. the standpoint of utensils and napkins, which is not a big deal at all. Um, okay, great. I'm just so, curious and nobody seemed very interested in a rain date. So we'll be inside or we'll be outside. If we're I inside, think, you don't have to bring your chairs. I think if we if we have a, if it, it, could, it could get canceled for rain, if you cancel, if we cancel for rain, then when we convene next, we can decide a new time. Yeah, sure. How about that? Sounds and good. folks are gonna bring what they bring and include what the ingredients are. Yep. I just wanna make sure that, yeah, it's a, cause I wanna bring like a main course for a lot of people. Cause I feel, you know, like I, I should do day. that cause of my volunteers. Um, is there any, should I bring a vegan option and a meat option or a gluten-free? I know you're gluten-free, Lori. There's a lot of new members that I haven't uh, had the- Don't worry about me. Oh, well, yeah. If it doesn't move, I'll eat it. So you're <laughs> vegan? No, I said if it doesn't oh, move. Okay, okay, you're, right. you're, 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 you're right. on the- Kill it I first it. and I'll eat it, right. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I can help you kill it for that matter. Anyone else have any other um, dietary um, choices that I can incorporate in bringing like a nice, I was thinking of like a protein or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't eat red um, meat. Okay, that's good to know. That's helpful. But I don't care, I'll have 
there'll be plenty. There'll be something there for all of us. There'll be there'll be something for all of us, but I just want to, you know, bring something nice for everybody to have. That's all. He's going to show up his cooking. He's going to, Jesse, No, I'm not going to cook. Can I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask, no. is everybody vaccinated? I That's am. a good question. Yes. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Cool. I couldn't even bring some vaccines and vaccinate people. <laughs> yes. I've been I went last week at Pulaski Park vaccinating people. I'm gonna I'm gonna need a booster soon, Kathy. I was gonna say we're ready for boosters. Yeah, you could bring you, some Kathy, booster we're party you near. <laughs> hmm. Um. Okay. Awesome. It's gonna be great. There's gonna be a lot of food and vaccines and. Uh, <laughs> It's gonna be awesome. All right. Is, so, is five to eight okay, or because it's Sunday, is four to seven better? Five to eight sounds good. Okay, let's leave it. You're I eighteen. Think, you know, I might actually make it. <laughs> I'm. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, <laughs> if my driveway is full, which it will be, you, it's right around the corner from the Jackson Street School, so you can always park at Jackson Street and walk over. Yeah. So five to eight, Sunday, July twenty fifth. Eighteen That's Ridgewood. Eighteen. Yes, eighteen. Eighteen Ridgewood. Gotcha. Second house in on the left. Gotcha. Got it. Gotcha. Well, we'll send. I think we'll send that out again. Great. We'll do a reminder. Okay. To Lonnie. Great. All right. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully, let's keep it five to eight, just because I might make it if I. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. You have to make it to Lonnie. I'm going to try. Won't it's a, be good it's a really busy you. day for me. It's like literally the one out of the, all the like options that I had. I was like, it's the only one I really couldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> um, do, you drive? do you need a ride? Anything no, like that? I'm, uh, I have an, a performance in the morning in Connecticut, and then I'm actually driving all the way to my grandmother's house in Pittsfield to celebrate my, my cousin's grandma. birthday. You can be late. It's, just, it's literally just the one day. <laughs> Um, but I also, I have, I also work in Connecticut, so I, I should also be popping off in the, probably the next 10 minutes or so. Okay. Um, are there any, can we just take a look at the agenda? So public art, communications, poet laureate, school, and volunteer, and then we have event updates in our separate ink meeting. Is there anything that we need the whole board here on? Yeah, we need okay. to ratify the public, the youth poet laureate. Okay. By the so, committee, and that's the most important thing on the agenda, in my my perspective. So let's go to that. Uh, who wants to? Who's going to do poet laureate? Um, I'm and should do it. Me. I, can, uh, I feel like I've been talking all night. I'd like to actually oh, shut my mouth. I mean, I go just, ahead. It's well, me, me too. God, I got to get uh, Rio's name. Ken, I can talk if you just tell me the name of the person. I forgot it already because I read the email. Rio. 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 So what's the Rio? I'll look at my email really oh, quick. Oh God, I can't Rio. remember her last name, their last name. Karen Schofield. I'm on it. Um, boop. Okay. It is Rio Santos. Right. So um yep. can somebody make a motion uh to appoint Rio Santos as the first in uh, the inaugural Youth Poet Laureate for the city of mm -hmm. Northampton. Sure, I, also I, I, I would like to move to appoint Rio Santos mm -hmm. as the inaugural poet Youth Poet Laureate for Northampton Arts Council and for mm -hmm. Northampton Leeds. I would like to second that motion. Mm -hmm. All in favor? favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Yay. Damon, I'm gonna say you say yes. Aye. I just so, want to add here that we had a blast, did we not? I it mean, was it, was great. Really it was really exciting. Good. The all the entries were ones that we all agreed. Anybody could. We've been happy with any of them, really and great. truly. So it was difficult, and that is a joy itself. In front, in front, we had so many really great young folks come in front, well, dude, in front. It was really impressive. Oh. They were great. It was wonderful. It was really, um, and Karen did great. She had, okay. she was so organized. It was great. And even, yeah, it was a really wonderful experience. It was, 
And Ken, but our so last what, interviewee is actually going to be working as an intern for the jazz festival. <laughs> is, is it possible to give Karen some kind, I mean, even a thank you letter or yeah. a gift or something? I mean, because I yeah, think she, she really did go above, and I don't know what's expected, but she really did everything possible to make yeah. it go smoothly. And Karen's, Karen's you know. great, Ken. She does get a, a, a stipend from us okay yeah. every year and she definitely she gets all of my uh, uh like i give her lots of compliments on her okay she's very cool. organized she's really great to work with um i was gonna say after i just i'm gonna email her right now and say that the board voted she's already got a press release ready to go and she's gonna contact the yeah. the um the new poll laureates and uh she's a, a pleasure it's to work great. with and i'm so glad she's our our poet laureate so it was really um, but Please, Will everybody, be, feel free to reach out to her and say thank you. So. Will this be her last event with us in person, or like uh, she continues with us through the fall? Yes. Yeah, yeah, she'll be a part of the biennial. Okay, so yeah, maybe at the biennial we can present her with some flowers or something. Just like thank you flowers, you know. Um, any other updates on the poet laureate? Is there is there a file that? can be shared. I'd be really interested in reading the new Poet Laureate's application. If you keep it internal, I'm sure it's fine. Because it's, yeah, does anybody have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with it. It's an internal document. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know if the person wants to publish their work, Jesse, or not or, publish their work. So it's, yeah. it could be for you to look, look yeah. but you couldn't share it with anybody else. Yeah, totally. I'm just I'm just interested in in reading yeah. reading who okay. it is. Is that is that a No, that's totally fine. It's your but it's an internal document for the board, mm -hmm. right? It's like we'd have to ask permission for them to share it with other people besides their board because they gave us permission yeah. to to share it within the board. So that just want to make sure that you understand that. Totally understand. So I I'll, I'll I'll find the, the the application and I'll share you that the mm -hmm. database and you can take a look at the the whole process. I, right poetry now. stunning. Oh, it's wonderful. The poetry is really stunning. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I want to read it. <laughs> awesome. Any other updates on Poet Laureate? Thank you all so much. This is wonderful. It was good. Um, do we have any school updates or are we taking? I, I think in the interest of time, I, I won't say anything other than the fact that Kalani and Lori and I have been in touch with the the schools and we are uh, working on organizing for what it is we expect to accomplish, um, would like to accomplish this coming year. And so next week or next month, we'll, we'll have, I think we'll have something to, to report. Great. Um, public art, Brian or Jesse, anything? Uh, one moment, hold on one second. Uh, okay. So, I don't know. We haven't had a meeting ever, so we should probably do that. Yeah, we should probably do that. Uh, we the public art festival. You all know. You, you all know that it went really, really well. Uh, <laughs> lots of good feedback. Um, people like the boxes. I had a woman in my office for an hour and a half tell me how much she liked the boxes and wants to do a box today. Um, uh, the walls are fantastic. That went up as well. So that was a big success. Um, what I, you know from my perspective I've, i i think i mentioned it before i really want to redo the bus shelters with uh, installation art um and i have a contact with the pvca who's who's leaving bye uh and Night. that's where bye sorry bye okay um so i just want to like I, there's some funding I think that can be earmarked for the city mm -hmm. as well as like uh, do some fundraising about re and maybe get some money from PBTA to like hire some like good local installation artists to redo the bus shelters that are downtown. That's what I want to focus the money on next year. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody, else, if Jesse, you have some other ideas, we can meet and and see where we can, uh, you know, kind of steer that money if you have better ideas. I just find it hard to get permission from building owners. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm willing to, to to keep on trying with that. It's just really difficult to find a really good wall and then find a building owner that's willing to work with us. Um, now I have an in with PVTA. I want to follow that. I've already reached out to them in a, in a preliminary way. They seem open 
to um, redesigning our like doing installation art on the bus shelters. And I think that would be really cool to activate those spaces um, and to make them more uh, habitable, uh, just more like creative and uh, just more bright. Uh, that's about all I have. Go ahead, Danielle. Um, I attended one of the meetings with Wayne about the lighting under the bridge. And I wonder, mm -hmm. I, I know that that's the state um, but I wonder if as part of the lighting proposal, it might be worth it for like public art committee. I'm happy to be a part of that conversation too. Might think about proposing something as part of the, as a joint proposal with the, with the lighting that we would co-fund and co-support um, some artwork. And they, they had mentioned in, in many ways having artwork um, as part of the process. And I was like, we should reach out to Brian. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if that's something that's for next yeah. year to think about. Well, we just have to find funding for it. And like Wayne has been kind of like, he's going to be getting a lot of money and then just like asking me right at the last minute to do stuff. And um, I've been on board, like the city's uh, Wayne and the planning department are going to put out, they're going to take all the news boxes out of downtown and just like install city run ones where they're going to do. And I'm in the middle of like planning a call for uh, uh, graphic designers to design vinyl wrapping for them. Um, but the idea right off the top of my head, you're saying underneath the, um, the bridge and the lighting there, I'm like thinking like we pasting, like, that'd be cool. You're like talking to, about the train overpass, right? That bridge, when you say bridge. Yeah. We're, we're, we're like, uh, water music is David people's piece. And then Sam Ostroff's pieces between like yeah. Moshi Moshi nourish yeah, yeah, and no, like yeah. that bridge right there. Yeah, so like just that, like, kind of like scene to me of like under bridge lighting, just like just beckons me to like this like 30s style like we pasting thing we can like have people design we paste and putting them up or something like that on the underneath the bridge lighting um so i don't know if we can have input on the design of the lighting danielle but i i, I would like to figure so out it, a way we i think can. we can and and i just wondered if it would be like since we have to get state approval and the state is going to have to approve the lighting i wondered if we could bundle the proposal with what they're doing for lighting. They're using grant money to pay for the lighting. If we had our own independent funding for an art installation, if we just ask the state to approve one thing that's happening under the bridge, instead of having them approve the lighting and then having them also when, approve the. So should I, what should I do? Reach out to uh, Wayne. Wayne and see what's yeah. happening with that? Yeah, I know they have a lighting designer um yeah he's like a big wig in town it's tom douglas he does yeah every, like, does tom, everything. Oh, he's a light he's an architect isn't he yeah he also does lighting i i don't know it just i went to a couple of the meetings and they i don't know there were it was there was it was a an open forum for community feedback and it seems like it's still in early phases mm -hmm. um so what's, now what's the deadline for the proposal i i don't know Okay. I think I don't know when the and I don't know when the deadline to spend the money is either. I it wasn't this past fiscal year. Wayne's going to public with it now. It's probably pretty close to the deadline. <laughs> but so, I'm just telling you my like that's Brian, it's, there, and it's not go ahead. Th there's another project as well that's related to this redesign of Main Street, and that is when you listen to Tool talk about. This, the redesign, one of the areas they talk about is what they call, I think they call it the arts plaza. You know, and they were looking for community input on that. Have you talked to Wayne about that at all? Or have you heard no, about not that at all. all? I've been wanting to redesign that place for a while. So the idea I had was just pulling the sculpture out and turning it into more of like a, a busking station. Uh, that's what the staff has talked about. Um, and then start booking busking acts there out of uh, the academy and out of signature sounds and out of the you know the local venues to have busking from the venues so they can come out and like preview their show kind of but i'll talk to wayne I'll, i guess I'll, I'll have a conversation with wayne tomorrow I'll email him right now and see if i can have a conversation about lighting and uh what is it called the arts arts plaza i think they called it what is that um, which, what are they talking about? The, where the you know where the sculpture is? Oh, right uh, now in front of um, the church. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they they were asking for input from the community, and I just thought you know this just invites is like inviting us to, oh, to play a role. Well, that's important because I don't think Wayne asked for very much from the community. 
He just gets these grants that have a very like tight timeline. Well, I don't know. He he knows what he wants and he gets it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on public art? Okay. Online communications. Amen. Amen. Um. No update from last time. Um, I think we are still working with the, the designer for the logo, um, but I don't know, Brian was, is the one who has direct communication. So I, 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 I sent them your input and some of my input and I still haven't received any response from that yet. So once we have something like that and go forward, I can show you guys the latest iteration if you want. Um, That'd be great. But, uh, if there's still room for, if. If there's still room for feedback, it would be great to see a version. If not, then. There's no room know, for maybe. feedback yet. So, okay. <laughs> but I'll, I'll show you where we're at right now. Cause I can't, I don't have the brain space to sit here and try to like interpolate that to, in a very nice way to a graphic designer. But here, here's the latest screenshot that he sent us. Well, how come I can't attach it? Oh, there we go. Not one. able to open that file. Can you just share your screen, Brian? Yeah. I don't. I'm not a host anymore, but I'll turn it into a Here. JPEG. I'll make you a co-host. Oh, it has to be a host, not a co-host. Weird. Oh. One moment. Is that it? What about what about this one? For me, it's still not downloading, but I did make you a host. Okay, one second. Only host. Okay, put share screen. Oh, there we go. Oh. Can you see it? Okay. Okay, now I see the C. <laughs> That's the latest iteration we're still working on. Is it going to be black and white? Is that the color scheme and stuff? No, it's just the one. It's just one mark. We're going to try to be able to make it mutable so we can, like, you know how there's different uh, uh, specs on people need to put things places. So gotcha. we're just making it so we can like stack it different ways, Perfect. have different yeah. colors and stuff. Yeah. So again, this is the only just want to start out with in black because it'll that way you're focusing on the design and then you can get into branding and logo colors. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that's why it's just in black. So we can lock it different ways. That's where we're okay. trying to make it mutable. So you know like our our, our logo is now you can there's the long one and then there's the one that's a square oh, and yeah, yeah. we just want to make it sure that it's flexible for different uh, dimensions for different people that's because they have to use our a lot of people have to use our logo on their assets because we give them money right so mm -hmm. so that's where we are right now i'll as soon as i get a new update mm -hmm. for the next board meeting i'll definitely share it with amen gets it first and then we discuss it through email and then we um we uh show it to you you know that was the first one i showed i was waiting to have like a more of a final thing but uh, me and Amy have been taking taking our time with it. Mm. Well, I I haven't. Our, oh, how do I unshare my screen here? Mm. View options. While. The top. View options. Uh, you should be able to. Or at the very bottom, share screen. Sorry, mm. I'm having a, a a Zoom moment here. <laughs> Stop share. I see it. There we go. Have a moment. So. I I would, I, I would ask, I sort of wonder if it's possible if we've ever included in our process before is to share whatever like our final three options are, our final two options are for logo with like an accessibility um, specialist just to take a look at like our color contrasts, legibility, stuff like that. I've been trying to incorporate that into my practice in the museum. So it might be something to, to consider if possible mm -hmm. um, building into our timeline. Yeah, I would, I, you know, I, as somebody who does that, I would be keeping yeah. an eye out for that anyway. Um, but yeah, we're just in black and white right now, but absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. 
and we right. can release like a set of guidelines for when we give the asset out to people mm -hmm. like it has right. to be used x way yeah i'll reach out to when we have the next iteration i'll reach out to the um accessibility committee at on the city okay. and see if they have any input on it and they can help guide our design from there and then i'll rely on amon's uh, uh experience on how we can um include that language and stuff yeah it's really important yeah for everything we do um awesome thank you any updates from volunteers kathy no just you know for for our next event and just thinking about um the conversation about getting a volunteer for to help out with um you know the work on uh, the um, biennial. It's like, well, that should be something that we we should have thought about earlier on. You know, in terms of reaching out to people. But well, Kathy, our plan are was you... our, our, go ahead. Ahead. our plan was Ashland to do it, and that that didn't really work out. So because of uh, internal conflict on the subcommittee, and then Zoe reluctantly took up the mantle. Yeah. Um, and after Kevin did it last biennial, he quit. Yeah, he did quit after that. So, and and now Esther's gone too. Yeah. And, and so I think it's just a lot of a, a lot of ask for a volunteer to do it. So yeah, I think exactly. what Ken mentioned about maybe some kind of paid position would 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 help soften right. that blow. I wonder if we could um, pay Kevin. I wonder if we could offer to pay. Maybe Kevin. he'll do it. I, you know. It, yeah. I hope that would be a lot of work paid. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't want to ask Kevin again because he's, okay. you know, I feel like we, we could try. Uh, I'll ask him, but he's usually everybody's busy like in August. Um, it's really hard. So, you know, we'll I'll look around. You don't know any good arts administrators that are looking for some side work. I might, I want to see a job description though. I can forward okay. it to people, well, but um, it would be helpful to see what, it, what I'm I'll, asking for. I'll try to send out a doodle to um, the members of the committee um, and see about getting together so we can get one up soon. Or I'll talk, I'll, maybe Ellen and I can meet. I'll, I'll try to fill in the gaps. It would be great. I'll try to fill in the gaps while, uh, if, yeah. if, which I am doing while Zoe backed away, so. Mm. Um. Kathy, are you also coordinating volunteers for the performance? unsung well, heroes usually i mean i usually do the back of the house with the food but um brian maybe you and i should talk about how we want to do it for the um front of house we should have a meeting and we also need people to come it would be nice to have board members to come our summer park series to be available to the community <laughs> we set up a tent we sell tickets i sell tickets to trans performance yeah, and i have true. some counter cards to to do, market the rest of the events do we could maybe um would it be helpful for you brian if we we sent up a you know a sign-in sheet or something like that for people to show up or what what do you think what would be best well i sent out a sign out sheet sign up sheet for the performance for performance mm -hmm. already which i have to change the name of let me do that um and then some people have reached out to me and i haven't i haven't done any sh sharing with our volunteer list i may have um mm -hmm. done that but mm -hmm. let me just yeah, double check at some point on that. we should look at that volunteer list and figure out because I know somebody who used to volunteer is I, I think she's in Arizona now. Mo Kathy, when do you when do you have uh, when do you have some free time to come meet with me? I could well. No, when, when are you? I mean, I'm a. Let's see what's going on. She's, just tell me. Why don't we just? Why don't you just email me some free time okay, after this meeting? Yeah. No, and I. You and I will get it. together and we'll yeah. come up with a plan, and then we'll share yeah, that. We'll the plan. That, that would be good. I'd like to come over and visit with you. But to, for everybody that's still in the meeting, we our first summer park series is a Thursday night. It's Cloud Belly and Lisa Bastoni. We'll be there from five thirty to seven thirty. If you want to come hang out with me at our little it's tent. Fun. Um, and uh you know just yeah, talk to people see the, the scene and then friday it's thursday friday hopefully it doesn't rain we got rained out on last friday but it doesn't seem like this summer is going to change with the rain so yeah. hopefully um and then you know we got a lot of cool events uh i'll send you here's a here's a link to our summer concert series that's mm -hmm. coming up i'll put it in the uh, thing you can check out the see the the schedule and if you feel like just stop by and saying hi do that too it's right downtown um if you're downtown you can just walk by um cornucopia is going to be there giving out free samples to stuff which is cool 
-hmm. and uh it'd be nice to see people in person no it's great i mean i remember having gone and just hung out with you guys it's really fun to be there yeah um so kathy and i will have a meeting and then we'll uh come back come back we have to meet we have to trans performance and then first night is the big one like yeah, other, you know one. you really have to figure yeah. that one out i mean yeah performance and first night are more number one summer park series you know it's just nice to hang out in the summer and like chat and watch the good it's music. also good for us as member uh, arts council members to kind of get you know just be there and also talk up the arts council and maybe see if we can get other members or get members for our committee committees yeah that's a good idea yeah um i have another thing because it's the uh, is um signature sounds has offered us a free booth at green river festival and mm -hmm. all the staff is going to be there with a tent um kind of uh selling buttons for first night and mm -hmm. um wow. just pushing first night because it's i know it's august but it's the end of august and we don't have any other like fundraising events to push so we're going to be there doing that for a couple days Wow. Good. Um and if any of the board members want to get a pass to come and do that as well, you're 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 welcome okay. to join us. Maybe. All right. Okay. Wonderful. I know um, I know every I know everybody here has so much free time. <laughs> um was that event updates or should I do we have any other business to discuss in the municipal meeting? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't have uh where's the um, we've gone through all of our agenda items. Yeah. Okay, so I'd like to move to close the municipal meeting. Mm -hmm. Second. And the time is 937. 937. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moved, I believe. And I'd like to move at 937 to open the ink meeting. Mm -hmm. Any inks? One a second. I do. I guess I'm. Oh, okay. Freeman, you and me are the inkies. I second. Okay. So ink is open. We have event updates. Brian? I just did them. It's Summer Park Series, yeah. Thursday, Friday, uh, performance, August 17th. Uh, and that's it. Uh, we have more. There's more. Uh, so, you know, if you can come to the Summer Park Series, Thursday, Friday, and then Friday, July 23rd. And then Tuesday, August 3rd is going to be really special. Um, and then Live South in the Park kicks off on Friday, August 6th. We got, we got a, like a brand new, the city bought us a brand new dance floor for Pulaski Park in the cafe area. Oh, right. We're going to have a live band, awesome. um, uh, 10 piece band, two DJs, salsa instructors, mm. salsa dance competition, salsa uh, performances mm. by like professionals. It's mm. going to be really nice um and then that is uh and on saturday august 4 september 4th we'll have another salsa but it's all it's like a it's a lot, a lot less it's just a dj dj bonghead from rhythm nation but combo loco is august 6th so the two mm. i'm really excited i'm excited about all of them but the two that i'm really you know i'm ready to dance salsa on friday august 6th yeah, and then Tuesday, August 3rd, Priya Darshini is coming and she was nominated for a Grammy for Best New Artist this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just happened to know her husband um, from undergraduate and we booked him before. And he's also an amazing artist in his own right. But Priya is like fantastic and she's touring on her new album. And they happen to be in the area that time. And I booked it at last minute and it's going to be a fantastic mm -hmm. show. So um, that week in August, August 3rd and August 6th, like, I would be there in Pulaski Park if I were any of you, because they're going to be both excellent, excellent events. Okay, that's it. That's my event updates. We can all sign off if you want. Long night. Uh, motion to close the ink. I make a motion. Second. 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 Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Thank right. you. Touch Brian. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, shoot me an email, Kathy. Yeah, thanks. Gotcha. Bye.